What it takes to image generation in remote sensing? In remote sensing, uh, we want to produce images from text description and hopefully we can do that in a realistic way. And this shapes the backbone of image generation from text in remote sensing. And here you can see some uh, results generated by uh, the proposed approach using these text prompts. So all we want to do here is to produce realistic remote sensing images from these text descriptions and hopefully these images can be used in a downstream task, for example scene classification, to, to, uh, to, to improve uh, the quality of the scene classification approach. So here we want to produce realistic remote sensing images which describes a particular semantic and this is what we want to do here. As I said before, in Dolly uh, version 1, we have uh, 250 million pairs of images and text to train a high-weight network with 12 million parameters. But this is not the case in the remote sensing community. Uh, if we want to develop something in the remote sensing community, which can produce realistic images, we should uh, count on much fewer pairs of images and texts. And this is what we did through text to image MHN or modern whole field network. And here you can see the flowchart of the proposed method. So uh, uh, let me uh, describe it in an abstract way in the first place, and then uh, I'll describe every uh, building blocks in more details. So let's imagine that we have pairs of images and text, uh, and we pass them through uh, the image encoder and the text encoder to produce the image tokens and the text tokens. After that, we can pass uh, these tokens to, uh, to the text embedding and image embedding with positional encoding. Why we use positional encoding here? Because, because uh, we want to use transformers here. And in transformers, uh, we look at each entities individually. It's not like a sequen sequential models, like, like recurrent neural network, where we can model the whole sequence. Here, in order to, to model the contextual uh, continuity of different uh, images, different image tiles, we use positional encoding, which gives an identifier to different tiles or different entities. After that, we concatenate the output of image embedding and text embedding with positional encoding to come up with the joint text image embedding. After that, we pass them through n blocks of prototype learning, uh, uh, which is composed of hopeful layer and self-attention layer. And through these n blocks of prototype learning, we want to come up with some sort of course to find learning process, because we do not have too many uh, pairs of images and text. And because of that, we want to uh, model the most uh, important prototypes or features here and after that we can use these features to model the, uh, the uh, model complex semantics uh, in our text description. After that uh, we pa pass uh, the result uh, to one extra whole field layer to produce the uh, predicted logits uh, followed by softmax uh, to, to produce the predicted image tokens. The whole network will be uh, penalized by, by, by uh, reducing, by minimizing the, the cross entropy loss function between the predicted image tokens and the real image tokens that we have here. One of the very nice things about this network is that uh, many, many parameters are frozen here and they are not involved in the training phase. And because of that, we can use a limited number of uh, training samples. But how we can do that? In the first place, we train VQVAE. VQVAE is very similar to autoencoders. It's composed of encoder and decoder, but at the same time, we have one extra thing, the code book or the dictionary. So uh, we take the input image, we pass it through the encoder to pr produce the encoded features. After that, uh, uh, we map each entity in the encoded features to one of the points in the code book, and with that, we can uh, produce a, a code book indexes. 
this uh, can be used as the input. Uh, to, uh, so after that, uh, the codebook indexes together with the encoded features can be used to produce the image embedding. After that, we uh, feed the image embedding to the decoder to uh, reconstruct the input image. And the whole network uh, will be penalized by uh, minimizing the reconstruction loss, as you can see here. This is actually one of the ways. Another way is to add two more terms to this uh, uh, reconstruction loss to bring the encoded features and the codebook closer to each other. And in this way, we can involve the codebook in the training step. As soon as we train this network, we freeze uh, the, the, the parameters here, and we use uh, these parameters as they are in the uh, uh, encoder and decoder parts of the proposed method. Okay, as you can see here, uh, the codebook itself, itself is not differentiable, and it cannot be involved in the uh, training phase, because we cannot easily perform backpropagation here. In order to do, uh, perform backpropagation here, we can simply uh, uh, transfer the activations from image embedding to the encoded features. This is one of the ways that we can investigate. Okay. As I said before, uh, we use n blocks of prototype learning here. And each prototype learning is composed of one whole field layer and one self-attention layer. The whole field layer uh, um, contributes uh, to, uh, to the proposed uh, methodology uh, by training the most representative prototypes and saving the stored patterns in W content or prototype content matrix. It also contributes uh, to, to the network by learning to represent the input text image embedding features X with the learned prototypes using the prototype lookup matrix or W lookup. And here uh, you can see uh, what's going on in, in a whole field layer. So here we have two trainable matrices, WLOOKUP and WCONTENTS. And here you can see the sizes as well. A uh, number of prototypes is a hyperparameter, uh, which is uh, set in the first place by the user. And DEMB is the size of the embedding layer, which is uh, chosen uh, uh, to be 512 in this study. After whole field layer, uh, we use self-attention layer. So whole field layers are associative memory layers. So uh, this means that they can uh, uh, store and learn the most representative prototypes and features. And with that, we can produce a more realistic uh, image semantics from texts. Uh, it's a, a differentiable process, the whole field network, uh, whole field layer is a differentiable process, so you can easily embed it in any network that you want, and it can easily contribute to the backpropagation phase. Uh, but in order to further strengthen uh, the inner information interaction among different tokens in the input text image embedding features X, we use self-attention layer. And with that, we can model the contextual information between different entities. And here you can see mathematically how a self-attention layer can be applied. Here we have uh, two uh, um, trainable uh, matrices called query transformation matrix WQ and key transformation matrix WUK. Uh, and here you can see the sizes as well. And n is the size of the uh, image tokens, uh, so, sorry, n is the size of the text token, and m is the size of the image token. And here you can see how beta, or the scaling scholar, can be estimated. As I said before, we, we use n blocks of prototype learning, and this is followed by another whole field layer. The only difference between the, uh, this whole field layer and the previous ones is that the output is with the size of n plus m multiplied by k. The size of the text tokens, the size of the image tokens, and the size of the dictionary that we have. And with that, we can produce the predicted logits. And the predicted logits will be used as the input for the softmax to produce uh, uh, the predicted image tokens. The whole network will be penalized by minimizing the cross entropy loss between the predicted, uh, between the probability vectors of the uh, 
predicted image tokens and the real image tokens. So this was a training phase. And here we want to produce the predicted image tokens. After that, we uh, feed that uh, into the decoder network to produce the generated images. This is a training phase. In the test phase, we only have text description and the predicted image tokens uh, will be estimated solely based on text descriptions auto-recursively. In order to do, uh, um, uh, evaluate the performance of the proposed approach, we use RSICD dataset, which was originally uh, developed for image captioning. But here, we, we developed something for the first time in the remote sensing community to produce realistic images from text. Uh, and and uh, for that, we use this uh, data set, RSICD. And as you can see here, the number of uh, training uh, images and text descriptions that we have, the pairs, uh, are much limited than, than uh, the methodologies which have been developed in the computer vision community. So the number of training sets that we have is around 8,700, uh, and the number of test sets that we use is more than 2,000. Here you can see the, 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 the scores, uh, the matrices, uh, the metrics that we use uh, to, to evaluate the performance of the proposed approach. The inception uh, score, the uh, um, uh, FID score, and we also propose another thing called zero-shot classification overall accuracy. But in our opinion, uh, uh, so, so in the remote sensing community, we emphasize more uh, on uh, how realistic our uh, remote sensing images are. And I think uh, zero-shot classification overall accuracy can uh, evaluate the realism of uh, remote sensing images in a better way. What we do here is we train a classification model, for example, something based on ResNet 18, uh, only based on the generated images using the text descriptions on the test sets. So here we don't use any real images. We simply get the text description from the test set. We produce uh, images, and then we use those images to train a classifier, uh, something like uh, REST 18, for example. Um, um, since we don't use any real images, uh, this zero-shot classification overall accuracy might be the best index to evaluate the performance of the uh, proposed approach or other approaches in order to uh, produce realistic images in the remote sensing community. And here you can see a list of uh, approaches that we use uh, to compare our approach against. Well, uh, let me show you uh, some qualita uh, qualitative results. Here you can see the input image and here you can see the result uh, or, or the images reconstructed by VQVAE and VQGAN. We use both of them in our network to see which one can produce more realistic images. So uh, VQGAN uh, uh, provide more details, more special details. And uh, um, from this point of view, it can outperform VQBAE. But one issue with uh, VQGAN is that it can hallucinate and uh, produce uh, some fake objects. For example, here you can see the uh, water tanks, uh, which are uh, circular. Uh, but the, when we use a VQ again, the, the shapes uh, are reconstructed in a rectangular way. So although it uh, provides more details, somehow it hallucinates the shape of different objects. And here you can see the result of different approaches. Text to image MH N using VQVAE and VQGAN are uh, from the uh, proposed approaches. And here you can see the real images. And here you can see the result of other uh, approaches like uh, DALI and others. So here we use the text description to produce images here. And here you can see some examples, some more examples here. Look at this stadium here and look how other approaches uh, work for this particular uh, text description. Here you can see some quantitative results. 
and uh, 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 while GAN based approaches can outperform the transformer based approaches uh, in terms of inception score and FID score, as I said before, in the remote sensing uh, applications, we emphasize more on the realism of the uh, produced images. And maybe zero shot classification overall accuracy can, uh, can uh, comment on uh, how realistic uh, the, the, the generated images are in a better way. And as you can see, the proposed method can achieve the highest zero shot classification overall accuracy. Here you can see the, the result of uh, some ablation studies. For example, one of the key components of the proposed method is the prototype learning. Uh -huh. So, uh, and the prototype learning is composed of two layers, the whole field layer and the self-attention layer uh, with this particular order that you can see. In order to see if, uh, if uh, we really need the prototype learning block, and if we should use coffee layer in the first place and then self-attention layer, uh, we use this ablation study. And as you can see, uh, uh, the prototype learning uh, block can help us to get much better results in terms of zero-shot uh, classification overall accuracy. And uh, the order that we should, we should use in the prototype learning should be uh, first coffee layer followed by self-attention layer. And here you can uh, see some ablation studies about the number of prototypes that we use here, uh, the size of the embedding layers, and the number of uh, blocks that we use here. And here you can see uh, some visualizations from the last 20 tokens, uh, uh, from the first 20 tokens produced by the last uh, whole field layer. Uh, he, in this very slide, you can find uh, the, the, the associated codes. And as I said before, this work has been uh, accepted by IEEE transactions on image processing. And um, check this um, um, website uh, for, for, for the archive paper and, and the code as well. Well, uh, this was uh, the end of the first example. And in the next couple of slides, I'm going to discuss change captioning or the second example.